When someone brings up city builder games, most people would think of the classic SimCity series or even today's City Skylines. But what many people don't realize is that there are other city builder games that take place in settings you wouldn't expect. Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom is the last city builder by developer Impressions Games, who went out of business two years after the game's release. Impressions Games has made several historical city building games before Emperor, with titles such as Caesar 1 through 3, Zeus and Poseidon, and Cleopatra. What makes these games stand out from each other, outside of some mechanical changes here and there, is each game's setting. While the Caesar games were set in ancient Rome, Cleopatra was set in Egypt, and Emperor in China. These themes not only allow for variance in their individual mechanics, but also benefit from any prior historical knowledge that the player may have. History classes teach us that the introduction of rice to the kingdoms of China was crucial for their development. This is an easy enough concept to understand, but once put into the context of Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom, the player truly appreciates how important the development was. Given that appreciation is based on prior interest in the subject, if you even have a slight intrigue in historical China and city builders, there is a strong chance you'll enjoy Emperor just as much as people enjoy fan favorite games like City Skylines and SimCity. Using myself as an example, I've owned Caesar 3 and SimCity 2000 for years now, but have only played Zeus and Poseidon and as of recently, Emperor. That could be because I like the general aesthetic more in those games, but I'd like to think that it has more to do with my connection with Greece and China. My fascination with ancient Greece stems from my love of Disney's Hercules, and ancient China has always interested me ever since an Eastern history course I took in college. So when I've been tasked with the creation of a city I've learned about, I can't help but feel excited. So how does one go about creating these ancient cities? Well, at first it may be as simple as placing a few houses down, an inspector's building, and a well for water, but it quickly becomes a lot more complicated as you seek to evolve your city. To attract more people per household plot, you'll need to provide these people with a source of food. So, you build a fishing quarry, hunting shacks, or farms. But food needs at least some preparation before it's sold, so you'll need to make a mill in order to get the food ready for distribution. Now well fed, the people need clothing to keep them warm as they work outside. So, you make hemp farms to produce hemp for your people's clothing. And so goes on the pyramid of needs and wants. But each stone that makes up the pyramid is also a potential flaw in your city. If even one of the requirements for your current level of housing is not met, the entire plot degrades and forces a certain amount of population to leave your city. This can cause a domino effect and force hundreds of people out of your city. The vacancies caused by mass emigration creates an employment issue that then causes a production issue, and without proper production, your city isn't able to grow. This means that a solid infrastructure is as important as actual supply and demand. Place a mill too far and it can cause fluctuations in your food supply, but place it too close and people will find that area unappealing and refuse to move near it. In a way, this becomes a game of City Tetris, trying to fit everything you need into a relatively small plot of land, while still making sure important structures are where you need them to be for peak efficiency. And just like the levels in Tetris, it only gets more and more hectic as your city expands. But building your city isn't the only thing you have to do. There are plenty of relations you must maintain in order to assure your city isn't destroyed or captured. There are heroes who, if left alone for too long, can use their powers to cause floods, earthquakes, or worse. So appeasing them with your excess goods is rather important. There are also other cities you can trade with, wage war against, or just ignore. But seeing as trade is usually your city's primary means of income, it's a good idea to invest some time into wooing a city or two into trade. These relations with your city help pad out the game by providing the player with something to do as they wait for developments in their city. And despite generally requiring less time than the actual management of the city, it's an equally important part of maintaining it. But sometimes diplomacy won't work, and the only way you can keep your city safe is through bloody war and combat. The creation and management of armies is very important since a lack of defenses will make you prone to another city's conquest, which will result in a game over or, at best, yearly tributes you must pay to your master city, as well as having several missions requiring the conquest of other cities. Thankfully, this too isn't nearly as complex as planning your city, since it usually comes down to a numbers match between you and your opponent. Whoever has the bigger army wins, and rarely do matters of tactics come into play. In fact, your army functions more like bronzeware than it does an actual army. Your army doesn't eat up your population the bigger it gets, the soldiers just come out of nowhere I guess, and once made they seemingly don't require any maintenance. 
This lack of depth when it comes to the military portion of the game can be viewed as wasted potential for breaking up the game's at times monotonous flow. But the lack of diversity reinforces the game's core concepts of supply and demand. By not branching too far from its core concepts, the game allows the player to approach military much like they would any other part of the game, and by doing so, smoothing out the game's already intimidating learning curve. But that's not to say the game wouldn't have benefited from some sort of breakup in the gameplay. Far too often, the game requires you to build a monument, and despite working on it the entire mission, the game will have you spend upwards of an hour just sitting around waiting for its construction after you've achieved all other goals. The first Great Wall mission is a good example of this. Early on, you'll be assailed with requests by Jin and Lo Yi, demanding large amounts of iron from your fledgling city. This creates a lot of pressure early on to please them, but as soon as the initial pressure is over, you're sitting in your presumably well-constructed city waiting in-game years for the construction of the Eastern Great Wall to finish. There shouldn't be any supply issues, since the player has the means of creating almost all the commodities their city may demand, and there shouldn't be any threats or demands to stave off, since you should have a big enough army to intimidate or conquer anyone that would threaten you. It just becomes a waiting game, and even at max speed, it took me about an hour to finish the wall after the dust settled. But dust rarely settles in Emperor, and the rest of the game's missions tend to have a nice rhythm to them, keeping the player constantly engaged and providing a sense of accomplishment that sits somewhere between a power fantasy, maternal care, and that aha moment one gets from puzzle games. The concept of the game gives the player a feeling of power and grandeur that can only be provided by sitting in the throne of a grand kingdom while also giving the player a sense of investment into each city they build that, with proper care, turns into pride as the city blooms into a bustling aggregate of culture. There's also the puzzling aspect at the beginning of each mission where the player sits on a blank map thinking about how they can fit as much as they can into these blank canvases for civilization. It's a sensation that I haven't had in a long time and is largely missing in 2017. Not many games require the delicate balancing act that is presented in Emperor, and it's something that I feel would be a great addition to today's trend of putting older genres in a new light. Lethys Path to Progress in City Skylands started with rather great success, but City Skylands was more based off of SimCity, and Lethys may have similar mechanics to Impressions games, but lacks the rich context that comes with a historical setting. That said though, this is a solid start for the return of city builders, and I hope that more games like Lethys and City Skylines come out in the coming years. As for Emperor, it's a great note to end the impressions game City Builders on, and is a very fun game for anyone interested in city builders or ancient China. If you're interested in playing it yourself, you can find it on GOG.com for the grand price of $6. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and here's another video by me if you're interested. It's on Dragon Quest, and I know that in that video I said I'd try to focus more on JRPGs, but I thought diversity wouldn't hurt, so I was going to expand it from not just JRPGs, but RPGs in general and strategy games, seeing as those are my favorite genres of games. That's it for now. Hope you have a good day, and I'll see you later. Bye!